Hey everyone, and welcome back to my next Create Mod video. Now today I'm gonna talk about all of the major things inside of the Create Mod update that just came out a couple of hours ago. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe as I'm gonna be covering all of these things in tons of more detail in the next couple of weeks. But anyways, let's jump straight into the video. So the very first thing I wanna cover is called Ponder. Now, no more having to watch the Rocket 14 Create tutorials because you can now figure out what these blocks do. Please don't unsubscribe. Uh, so <laughs> if you hover over absolutely any one of the Create blocks and you just hold down W, it will now show a little animation explaining exactly what those blocks can do. Uh, you can even, let's say here it's showing andesite tunnels and the cogwheels and stuff. Let's say you don't know what the cogwheel is. You can hit the identify key and then click on any one of these items and it will now bring up uh, or you could ponder this and then now it's going to bring up exactly to use cog wheels or if i don't know what this item is i can now bring up the speedometer now it's going to show what the speedometer is uh and so on and so on you can even uh think back so you can go backwards if you now don't want to know about this um you can see on the left if i want to click on like item transportation i can now see all of the items that are involved with item transportation and then from there i can kind of hold down shift for a summary or if i want to ponder something else hold down W and learn more about that. Um, and a lot of these things, uh, th they go in so much detail and break it down so perfectly. It's how I was able to learn all these items in like 10 minutes. Uh, so if you get stuck, check this out. This is going to be probably the go-to solution uh, if you want to learn on how to use a block in about five seconds. All right, so the next thing that I want to talk about is smart shoots. Now, smart shoots, if we grab the recipe really quick, um, is crafted with a brass sheet, a chute, and an electron tube. Not too expensive. And a smart chute is kind of speaks for itself. It allows you to control what items are going to go through a chute. So you can see right here, we have some iron. And we've set a filter to iron ingots here. So if we throw our iron in here, it will now transfer through our chute and go into our chest like so. Uh, but you can see that our gold is staying put. Something else to keep in mind with these smart shoots is that you can actually use a redstone signal to uh, basically tell if you want this machine to transfer the items uh, at this very time or at a later time. So you can see right now we don't have anything in our chest. In the top chest, we have our iron and our gold and our filter is set to iron. If we uncheck this, it will now start transferring our items, transfer it down, and we could flick it back on to stop the transfer. So this could be super useful and maybe some sorting machines. Shout out to Blockus. All right, the next thing to cover is the gantry. So let's go ahead and bring this guy up. And we can see that the uh, there's a gantry carriage and there's a gantry shaft. So the gantry carriage is a plank, andesite casing, two shafts, and a cog wheel. And the gantry shafts are two andesite alloys and a, a piece of redstone dust, which turns into eight gantry shafts. Now, uh, you're probably wondering, what does it do? So if we go ahead and attach it to a power source, you can see it's attached to a small cog wheel, a large cog wheel, and then a bunch of gantry shafts. Uh, if we go ahead and change the direction, so the rotation, uh, let's change it to be a positive, uh, it will actually move our machine back and forth. So you're probably wondering, uh, Rocket, that's quite pointless, uh, but this could be as simple as maybe uh, a type of transportation or something because you can attach blocks to this it's just like uh when we did all those minecart contraptions so i could see this used as maybe making some paths some floating platforms anything along those lines um also on top of that something to keep in mind is there's a couple things we could do here you can have redstone signals be activated so um let's go ahead and up this guy and we'll have him start moving you can see he's moved over here and if we give him a redstone signal it will now send the rotational force through the gantry shaft through the gantry carriage and then outside uh one of the shaft openings uh i haven't found a use in my head of how this could be used just yet um i'm thinking maybe if we could find a way to turn this into a miner underground this could be useful for maybe transporting items off of one of our miners that we've built uh but i figured pointing this out was a good idea Something else to point out about the gantry is that you could have two shafts like so. And if you grab a wrench, this is how I was able to do this. Um, you can right click and actually change which, uh, which way they're facing. So what this has done, because we have two gantry carriages on here. So we have one power source. And if we go ahead and make this positive, you could see that they will go in opposite directions. Again, we could maybe do a moving platform and they're going to meet together in the center or something like that. Um, but it's all based on the rotational force. 
Something else to really quickly cover is that gantries, you can actually connect multiple of them together and it's not going to cost any type of super glue. So you can see that we have one that's going side to side, then one on top of that that goes backwards and side to side and backwards. And you can see that as we go ahead and activate this thing like so, that we're moving multiple levels and multiple layers without having to use any super glue. So uh, maybe Polart's going to actually do his boat in this type of design in the future. All right, something else to cover is something that we have had in the past, and that is our funnels. So uh, you're probably looking at this, especially if you played in the last version, and you're wondering, what is this? So this is actually an andesite funnel that's been placed vertically. So it is a definitely a new design, uh, and there's some functionality behind this. So if we, we grab our wrench that we have right here, you can see that if we right click, we can actually change which direction it's facing. And you saw right there, it immediately started popping out some items. So we have some cobblestone in here. So if we click it down, it'll now suck in items from the top and place it into the chest. And if we flip it the opposite direction, it will actually start spewing out some items. So we can also have a redstone signal set up with this thing. So let's go ahead and have it facing upwards and we'll activate it. So that now stops this. If we unactivate it, it will now shoot our items up and vice versa. If we go ahead and activate this thing, you can see it's closed it. Uh, if we throw our item on top like so. There you go. Just like so. We activate it, it opens it up, and we'll suck the item right into the funnel. Now I'm going to show you on why this might be a little useful a little bit towards the end of this video. Alright, so the next machine is the sticker. Now the sticker is going to be super useful for a lot of the machines that I plan to build in the future and a lot of redstone contraptions. Uh, the sticker, if we go ahead and click on it, is crafted with a slime ball, a piece of redstone dust, two cobblestone, and two andesite alloys, and that makes one sticker. And you can see that right here we have a setup of a creative motor, we have our uh, mechanical bearing, and we have our sticker on top. So if we go ahead and activate this guy, so the sticker is now spinning around in a circle, uh, all we need to do is give this guy a redstone signal and he'll actually uh, stick himself to the wool. So we'll go ahead and stop him really quickly. If we go ahead and give him a redstone signal, he's now stuck to the block of wool. And we can activate him and he'll now spin around. Now something to keep in mind is while it's activated, it doesn't seem this redstone signal will interact with such a block. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, but once we go ahead and stop him, we just need to give him another signal and it will go ahead and unattach him. Uh, something to keep in mind is it's basically like a button press. So when the signal is activated, it tells it to move. When you unactivate it, it doesn't deactivate it. You have to activate it again to uh to make it release so that's uh something to keep in mind if you guys are using this in your designs now i think this is my favorite part to this update we finally have colorful belts all of the gearboxes and belts that i have placed everywhere i can now color coordinate them my my ocd is loving this uh so all you have to do to color coordinate these guys is you place down a belt place down a piece of dye and then just place it onto the belt itself uh something to keep in mind i read through the change log if you want to remove the colors of these belts you simply click with a block that has a type of water or type has a liquid in it um so water bucket and a water bottle can actually remove the colors of the dyes uh, so you don't have to break the entire belt in order to change that out Another quick thing to touch upon is crushers now work in every single direction. So you can see that we have our crushing wheels, not up and down, but actually side to side. So if we grab our iron ore, we can actually throw it through our machine and it will actually crush it to the other side. Uh, Going to be very unique. I tried running a belt through the crushing wheels to see if it would auto crush it on the belt. Doesn't seem like that works. So maybe we can find a way of throwing items through this that I'm going to touch upon in a few moments. So I know that I've just been making tons of food videos recently, um, but now there are three new foods that are going to be added into the game. So we're going to have sweet rolls, we're going to have chocolate glazed berries, and we have honey-eyed apples now. Uh, all three of these guys, uh, we might as well go through the recipes. So sweet roll is made with bread and milk uh, filled with a spout. Uh, we have our chocolate glazed berries, which is going to be chocolate and sweet berries. Uh, and we have honey glazed apples, which is honey and apple together turns into a honey eyed apple. Um, so I'm definitely going to be making some automation videos on these things. So if you are interested, please go ahead and subscribe. And if I've already made the videos, they should have just popped up on the screen. So go ahead and check those out.
Now, I know I said that I absolutely love the colorful belts, but I have to point out that there is now an ejector inside of the create mod, and I can't wait to use this. I've already decided that I want to build a pirate ship and eject items at other people from my pirate ship, uh, so I, I can't wait. So, uh, to show you on how this ejector works is if you place a block on the ejector and it has a power source, it will eject to where you want to place that block. Uh, now, before I go over the crafting recipe, I want to go over on how you'd set up where the item's going to go. So you're going to aim at a block, aim at what you're looking for, shift, right click, it'll say target selected, place down your uh, place down your weighted ejector, and then just simply wait for the, the power to draw it back, and you can throw your items on, if you can actually throw them on, and they'll go to wherever you need them to go to. Uh, so this weighted ejector, uh, let's go over the recipe, is simply a golden sheet, a depot, and a cogwheel, very cheap, and I could see this used instead of putting tons of belts around a machine to just have an ejector, shoot it to where you need it to go. Another quick thing to touch upon with this weighted ejector is that you could select the size before it activates. So if we hold out our wrench, you can see that we currently have this set to five. So it needs five blocks in order to activate. So, or five items to be exact. So you can see if I, if I can actually toss these items correctly. We toss one, two, three, four, and now we toss our fifth. It now activates it and shoots it to where it needs to go. Uh, this, again, could be super helpful for maybe sorting large amounts of items that you can wait until the stacks on the onto the ejector and then go ahead and launch it. Also, I figured I'd cover this because uh, you can actually launch entities. So if I grab some parrots, and no, I'm not going to kill the parrots, everyone that's watching this video, uh, we can actually push, if I can actually push one, push it onto the ejector, and it will auto-activate and shoot them near to the block that they're on. Uh, something to uh, consider is I know that if you aim your wrench at this and you change the number, it's not going to wait until four entities are on this ejector. It auto-ejects them immediately. So keep that in mind for any design you're doing near any types of like pig farms, cow farms, anything along those lines. Now, I know you probably thought the weighted ejector was already over, but it's not. We can actually use this to split stacks of items inside of a brass tunnel. So this is something kind of cool and unique to cover that was uh, showed in uh, if we went ahead and held down the ponder. So uh, I figured it was useful to show off. So you can see here, we just have a circle of items that are going around. You can see that on our brass tunnel, I've set it to uh, when multiple outputs are available to prefer the nearest, which is going to be our weighted ejector. And our weighted ejector is set to 32. Apologize if that was a little difficult to see. So if we throw a stack of iron ingots onto our belt, our iron ingots are now going to go through our brass tunnel and it's going to split the stack perfectly in half. So 32 of it is going to go onto this weighted ejector and go in this direction. And 32 of it is going to go into this circle and go back around. Now, I know that that was pretty useful or pretty useless, uh, but this can be very useful again for sorting items in the future or anything along those lines to easily be able to split stacks to whatever you're looking for. Speaking of throwing items everywhere, uh, we can also combine the andesite funnel and the ejector together to actually sort items to place them into a chest. So what this is, we have our powered weighted ejector. It's set to our andesite funnel that's pointing downwards. And if we throw our iron ingot onto it, it launches up in the air and immediately goes into a chest. So once again, maybe we could have uh, some type of like iron ore processing system and we can launch it across our house uh, through the ceiling and into a chest where we have our ores. Uh, I'm definitely gonna be using this in our SMP. I, I can't wait to go ahead and mess around with this thing. Also with this weighted ejector, we have the option to have redstone compatibility with it. So you can see right now we have our weighted ejector set up. There is no stack size that's set on this thing. So this thing would automatically launch into our chest, but we've had a redstone signal attached to it. So since redstone signals being sent into the weighted ejector, it's not going to launch. We flick it off, it launches into the air and goes into the chest. Again, something else I could see you guys using in some sort of design or something to just kind of pause the movement of machines. All right, so the last thing that we're going to cover is the new models. And there's a lot of different things in here that I want to show off um, just kind of as a for instance. So let's start with the engineer's goggles. Uh, you can see that they look a lot different. Um, same functionality of placing them on your head and you can actually see kind of everything else going on with all of the machines, uh, but they definitely look different. I prefer this design over the old one. Uh, the andesite funnel and the brass funnel look totally different now. They look a lot more uh, like a tunnel in my opinion, but uh, even when they're placed, they look completely different. They're no longer that very large block. They're about a half slab size now, which is a lot, a lot better in my opinion. 
Uh, and then we also have our rotational speed controller that looks vastly different uh, than the old one. I think I prefer this design, uh, but I know that a lot of people in my older videos, when they watch them, are going to get really confused on that old rotational speed controller that I placed down. Uh, but yeah, that is what I am going to cover in this video. So if you enjoyed this video, definitely go ahead and drop a like. Definitely feel free to subscribe. I know that if you are reading through the changelog line by line, you know that I did not cover close to uh, probably about 100 different things that were inside of that video. Um, a lot of them I didn't really see the reason to cover in a video uh, just because they were very minuscule, but I'm going to leave down all of the different things inside of my description that have been changed inside of the create mod, as well as if I find in the next couple of days that there's something I really should have touched upon, I'm going to make a video on it. Uh, but other than that, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Uh, please let me know in the comments your favorite thing that has now been updated inside of the create mod. And other than that, I'm out of here. I will see you guys all in the next one.